Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, the Death Ritual Spear is one of the cooler weapons in Elden Ring. You fire off a torrential rain of incandescent black spears above your enemy, and then watch them die. And we've got a way to do that while also applying Frost debuff, and of course also being power stancing two spears, which is an exceptionally strong moveset to have access to as well. This thing deletes bosses, it deletes players, it's just particularly strong thanks to some buffs it received in patch 1.09, and it really deserves some attention because of just how good this now is. And on that note, from one fantasy world filled with flying scaly beasts to another, I want to thank today's sponsor, Call of Dragons, the brand new MMO fantasy conquest game from the creators of Rise of Kingdoms. This fantasy world features everything from elves, orcs, treants, celestials, goblins and halflings, giants and wyverns and more, featuring a variety of battle modes in which you manage heroes with unique skills that can devastate foes and train massive behemoths, such as the powerful flame dragon. Summon them and they will assist you and your alliance on the battlefield. It all lends itself to you and your ability to strategize though. How will you manage your heroes? Which skills will you pair them with? Which abilities will you unlock? It's up to you to customize them best. But then how will you work with and against other players? Will you make use of your melee and ranged units or flying fighters in the sky? There are many ways to fight though between PvP, GVE and GVG, letting you use up to five legions, leading to impressively large scale battles. The classic 4x gameplay improves in Call of Dragons, letting you zoom in and out of this huge and realistic 3D map to take it all in or track your next target. All set in a vibrant world with cinematic graphics featuring a wide cast of talented voice actors and matching music for the adventure. So try the game yourself. Magic, monsters, and mastery. Experience the original, immersive, epic fantasy world. You can use our link in the description or use the promo code PLAYCOD now to receive a special bonus. Get started today and a big thank you again to Call of Dragons for supporting the channel. First up then, let's talk about the changes to the Death Ritual Spear that have made it better in this patch. This has specifically increased the projectile generation speed. That may sound a little bit odd, but essentially what this means is when you press the Ash of War button, the actual damaging rain will start hitting your target sooner after activation than it used to do. The difference is quite noticeable, and what this tends to mean is in general, one, it's easier to hit this Ash of War on something that is mobile, and two, this leads to faster kills when spamming the Ash of War, as the projectiles generating faster every time that you press the button makes the damage happen quicker too, thus more damage happens in a shorter period of time. That said, this build today focuses on this weapon, but we also have a beautiful pairing for it in the Clayman's Magic Harpoon. This is the only Ash of War changeable spear with base int scaling on it, which makes it unique and specifically fit our build here. And that lets us use the Power Sand Spear moveset, which has fantastic reach and thus creates a safe route to damage. On top of this, we put Chilling Mist, uh, the Ash of War, on this weapon too, which gives us a nice puddle of Chilling Mist in front of you that applies 120 frost buildup per second to enemies inside of it, and it also applies 60 frost to your weapon for a brief duration afterwards too. This allows you to pretty consistently access frost debuff whenever you feel the need to use weapon attacks, and while for the most part the skill on the Death Ritual Spear being spammed will just nuke down most bosses, some of them are just a touch too mobile to rely on that, and that's when you bust out the Frost Laden Power Stand Spears for a ton of damage the old fashioned way. This is also great for PvP, it's not too easy to hit either Chilling Mist or Spear Call Ritual on an actual player, as they are pretty obvious when they are happening and deal damage to an area over time, so all your enemy has to do is stay moving, but when it does line up, if you are against a Spellcaster or an over eager melee user running at you and just spamming their melee attacks at you, you can just knock them on their ass like it's nothing. In the world where neither of these attacks are working though, you are still in PvP with Power Stance Spears that scale well with your stats and also have the ability to put Frost on one weapon for Frost procs, so it's still quite strong even if you're up against someone who can dodge both of your weapon skills. With all that said then, let's talk a little bit about the things that come together to make this build as strong as it is as a whole. First up is the Death Ritual Spear itself, which is found by killing the Death Rite Bird over here in the mountaintop of the giants on the approach to Castle Soul. Then we have the Clayman's Harpoon, which is just a random drop from the Clayman enemies that wield it. Chilling Mist, the Ash of War, is a drop from killing the Scarab located here in the ruins behind Caria Manor. And when you apply this to your weapon, you want to give it magic affinity for better int scaling. You can give it frost affinity too if you want more frost buildup, but this will lower the damage of the melee hits itself a notable amount within the build. It's just an option based on the fight that you're doing and how you want to prepare for it. Then you want to use any of the weightless seals that you can get. Scaling with these doesn't matter, so just anyone with zero weight does the job best. Then you want any of the 2.5 weight stabs, as these are the lowest weight stabs available, and again, the scaling doesn't matter for these either. These two things will only be used for buffs that ignore scaling. As for your armor set, you want to use the Spellblade armor set for its 2% buff to magic damage ashes of war per piece. With all pieces equipped, that's a nice meaty 8% damage bonus to both of your weapon skills. You get this by picking it up off of Rogier's body in the roundtable hold
old ones he has died. Grave robbing. That's new. Then let's talk about your talismans. First up is the always useful, never surprising to see Shard of Alexander. This buffs all weapon skill damage by 15%, which is fantastic in any build that uses lots of weapon skills, of course, including this one. You get this from a quest line. The first step is to talk to Alexander in the desert where you fight General Radon. The second is to talk to Alexander in the lava pit southwest of the Seethe Water Terminus, site of Grace. And then the final one is to find Alexander in Crumbling Faramazula by the Dragon Temple Lift, site of Grace, and challenge him to an honorable duel. Next up is the Magic Scorpion Charm. This boosts all magic damage by 12% at the cost of your damage negation being lowered a little bit, but since every source of damage that we have is at least somewhat magic based, this is definitely worth having. You get this one from the Preceptor Saluvis questline once you've gotten far enough into it. Then we have the Air Tree's Favor, plus two Talisman for a boost to your maximum health, maximum stamina, and your maximum equip load as well. And this one is found right around here in Lane Dell after the city turns to ash by coming back up from the mountaintop of the giant side. Then lastly here is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for a massive boost to your physical damage negation. This one is found in the Halig Tree near the Drainage Channel, Site of Grace. Simply exit out the east side and follow along this path of tree branches and archways back to more branches and more archways until you eventually reach the roof of a building. Find the hole in the roof, drop down onto the wooden beams on your left, and you will see a chest on a balcony. The talisman is found within said chest. Then we have your wondrous Flask of Physic, and in here the one that you definitely want is the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear, as this boosts all magic damage that you do by 20% for quite a while after drinking your flask, and again, magic damage is our main offensive power within the build. This tier is found by killing the boss found at the minor air tree in the northeast side of the Liernia region. Then the second one is somewhat flexible and personal choice, but I personally enjoyed using the Cerulean hidden tier on this to just spam out spear call ritual as much as physically possible after drinking the flask. The FP cost of this weapon skill is not too large at all, but getting some extra casts in without having to drink a flask is just a nice enhancement to the pacing of a major fight. Then finally, let's talk about your spells themselves. First up is the ever useful Golden Vow. This buffs all damage that you deal by 15% and buffs your damage negation stats by 10% for 80 seconds after casting, making it near required in most builds. To get this, simply head to the Corpse Tent Shack on the eastern side of Mount Gelmir. Then our second incantation is Flame Grant Me Strength. This does nothing for Spear Call Ritual, but it does boost your physical damage and fire damage by 20% for 30 seconds after casting, which means that it affects both the weapon hit portion of Chilling Mist and the damage of your spear hits themselves for fights where you're using more weapon hits than weapon skills. To get this for yourself, simply wrap around the back of Fort Gale and Kaled where you'll find it laying between a couple of hot singles in your area. Then finally for spells, you'll want Terra Magica. This puts down a blue circle under you which boosts the power of all magic damage done within it by 35% while you are standing in the circle and for 3 seconds after you leave the circle as well. This is a massive boost to all of your damage overall as long as you can play around the circle, so it is of course great to have around. You get this spell at the end of the Academy Crystal Cave found under Raya Lucaria Academy right here on the west side. Basically, your plan of action here is pretty simple. Before the fight, cast both Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength. When you walk into a boss fight, activate Terra Magica, drink your Wondrous Physic, and spam Spear Call Ritual as much as a boss will actually let you. When they don't let you hit that, simply use Power Stand Spear Attacks and dodge. The damage is silly, and it just all comes together to make a nice, complete, well-balanced build with multiple avenues to very high damage. With all that covered then, lastly, let's look at the attributes that you want to make this work. First and foremost, you want a nice chunk of vigor. 40 works, but 60 is always ideal and comfortable if you can reach it. Then you want to hit 80 intelligence, as Spear Call Ritual scales best with this stat. Then 25 faith, so you can cast your buffing incantations. Past this, you need 20 dexterity to use the Death Ritual Spear properly, and then anything past that can just be mixed into mind and or endurance to make your casting life more comfortable as you feel is necessary. And that's it, everyone. An absolutely incredible build based around the Death Ritual Spear and Clay Man's Harpoon with an Ash of War that you can spam to destroy bosses as well as the advantages of having the Power Stand Spear moveset too, and a nice consistent way to apply Frost debuff on top of all of that for both the chunk of instant damage and the 10% increased damage debuff that the enemy gets while this debuff is applied. It does great against bosses and trashed enemies, as well as against other players in PvP. It doesn't really have a weak spot. I hope you've enjoyed this build, and I hope you have fun with it if you try it out for yourself. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.